Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Sander. This is Scumbag Customs. Today we're going to have a look at some custom airbrush stencils. If we have a look at the example over here, you can see that I used some scratching. I did the hairspray method and I made some rust streaks. So I will also be showing how to do those effects. Before we're going to start with the airbrush, we're just going to apply some quick layers of hairspray. It doesn't really matter what kind of hairspray you use, so I advise just getting some cheap stuff. Let's make some space, move these things out of the way. Before you start spraying, just give it a little shake. And please remember, it's better to use many thin layers instead of trying to put it all on at once. So that's the first layer. Just leave it out to dry and apply a couple more. I'd say two or three layers should do it. I have put on two layers of hairspray in total. Uh, it is quite dry but you can see it's a bit shiny, it's a bit sticky. Now please be patient with this. Uh, because I'm making the video, I'm trying to rush it a little bit, but it's better to just leave it out to dry uh, for a long enough time. So now it's going to be time to apply the stencil. When I apply the stencil, I use some modeler's masking tape. I have some 3M masking tape. I wouldn't use any painter's tape because I think that is a bit too strong and you have a big chance of pulling off some of the paint that you might not want to pull off. But even this tape might be too strong so what we do before we use it, I just grab a piece of cloth, I mean you can use your t-shirt, what you're wearing, whatever, and when you take off a little bit of tape. Just push it down on your cloth. This will grab some of the fiber, some of the dust and it just makes the tape a little less sticky. Put it on there maybe a couple times. Make sure you grab enough stuff from your cloth. Even put it up there. You can feel that it lost some of its stickiness. So now we can tape our stencil, just position it and tape it to where you want to have it. Here, let's put some more on there. Now very important, don't underestimate overspray. Okay? Just think about wherever you don't put tape, paint will end up. Sometimes it looks as if it's not going to end someplace, but after you pull off the tape, you will totally see a line. And that's just such a shame when you're painting something and you get overspray where you don't want it. Now, this is quite simple, but if you do your model like a tank or something, please make sure you tape as off as much as you can. You can use paper as well. You don't have to use tape for every little corner. For large pieces, you can just tape paper around it. Now it's time to start with the airbrush. I'll be using some Vallejo Model Air. I'll be using white. Uh, it is quite thin already, but if your paint feels too thick, you can use some Airbrush Flow Improver. So let's see. Give it a good shake. Okay, this uh, looks thin enough, so I don't think I'll be using the Flow Improver, but let's see how it comes out. Now, the same as with the hairspray, try to use thin layers. It's better to use a lot of thin layers instead of one big layer at the start. 
just test a little bit if it comes out. Let's give it a try. So I apologize for my compressor, it's a bit loud. You will keep hearing it as long as I'm using the airbrush. So this is my first layer. It's already a bit white, but I will put some more layers on there. If you feel that your airbrush is coming to, is using too much air, you can try and push down in the stencil so it doesn't move up, so that prevents more overspray from happening. Now this depends on what kind of stencil you are using, uh, how well it's taped and what kind of shape. This is a flat surface so it's pretty easy but if you're trying rounder surfaces you will have some more trouble with spray getting underneath the stencil. As I'm building up layers there's one more thing I'd like to mention about using an airbrush please use a mask okay don't just use a dust mask but try to invest in a real mask um, this is just very important uh, it, they don't cost that much and it's just so much better to use a mask even when people say you like no it's acrylic you don't need to use a mask it's always better to use a real mask I have used about four or five layers the color seems wide enough so I've cleaned my airbrush gave it some time to dry but again I advise to leave a little bit more time I'm in a rush as I'm trying to make this video in time but please keep enough time to dry so peel it off carefully the tape Now the good thing about these airbrush stencils is that they're made of mylar which is solvent proof so they're very easy to clean. You can use paint thinner or whichever thing you like to get the paint off. Now that looks pretty good. A tiny bit of overspray but I think that just adds a bit to the effect and when we use the hairspray technique we can clean that up a little bit as well. For the hairspray technique there are some things we can use. Now for starters it's a brush and some water. My water pot is pretty large and I'm pretty sure you know what water looks like so I'm gonna keep that off camera. Uh, some people like to use a toothbrush but because of the airbrush paint is very thin and comes off quite easy I like to use a little dentist tool I found at a car boot sale one day. I wish I could find more but that's all I got. So let's start with putting some water on there and just gently because the hairspray is everywhere I kinda like to get it all off. I always try to go put water everywhere. Be careful with how much water you use because it, you might take off more than you want. Now this is great for also just trying to get the overspray gone. You can just use your, your brush to wipe away some of the overspray and you can see some of the images already getting scratched a little bit. I always uh, try not to overdo it. It can be that you're getting a lot of scratches in there. I just try to be very careful. It takes a bit more time. You have to be patient till the hairspray underneath the paint kind of starts moving. Starts activating, I mean. Now I'm afraid I'm going to get the whole thing moving so I'm going to use my dentist tool to just make some tiny marks. As you can see it goes quite easy. Now 
But again, I don't want to overdo it. You can see the whole thing is kind of moving, so it might be good to just let it dry up a little bit again. Let's see if I can use some toilet paper just to get rid of the excess water on the sides. This part is basically trial and error. Just see what works for you. See if we can get a complete line in there. Just make some smaller marks all over. Try to do it randomly. I notice I forgot to first paint the eye in, so I have to do that later on. Oh, I think this stencil doesn't have the eye like the other one actually has, so I don't have to do that. Try to pick up the bigger spots of white that you're leaving that you're peeling off you don't want to have those stuck in the middle very easy to overdo it so please watch out with what you're doing leave it some time to dry sometimes with the airbrush paint it's quite easy to peel off more later I always know that I want to overdo it so there's some very tiny spots in here that I think are difficult to see on the camera so let's see if I can do a zoom up okay so I'm gonna leave it to dry give that some time and see if I want to make some more scratches or not I left some time to dry so I'm going to try and see if I can scratch a little bit more make some smaller lines in there because I started with the green already there I forgot to mention that you should put a clear coat over your base color that's especially for when doing this kind of scratching it's very important so you don't scratch off your base paint you don't want to end up seeing the plastic now starting to feel I'm overdoing it so I'm gonna leave it at that uh, I looked up uh, about the logo and I saw that there is an eye in there so I'm going to paint that in next I used some different shades of uh, Russian green 
for the base coat so I'm gonna use this model color Russian green to put the eye in very carefully how that's going it's a bit difficult because of the setup with my camera and everything it's not ideal okay I think that's pretty alright for a little eye in there now to demonstrate that you don't have to use the hairspray method you can also just paint in some scratches so to demonstrate I'll just put a little line through the eye just to show that you can do stuff like that as well if you don't want to use the hairspray method it just takes a lot more time and practice once you're happy with your result you can put a clear coat over I'm going to use Mr. Super Clear its uh, brand is uh, Mr. Hobby here in Japan but any coat will do you can even use a brush on one just give it a good shake And like anything we use today, instead of going full on, just start with some very thin layers. I have used about four or five layers of clear coat. So now when that's set, let's put some rust streaks on there. Before you're going to put the rust streaks on there, uh, I'm just going to use some model color burned umber to make some spots of rust just some tiny bits here and there again try to be random about it now the more you will do this the better you will get at it and the more natural it will look not every bit is going to be a rust streak but you can add in some longer stripes or some bigger spots where you want the rust streaks to be now maybe this is a bit boring so I think I will fast forward a little bit once you're happy with all your scratches and rust spots you can put on another clear coat before we go to the next step we are going to use some Tamiya color enamel paints I'm going to use their flat brown and some Tamiya color enamel paint thinner to make this streaking now I suggest not using your favorite brush for the enamel paints and maybe try to use a flat bar brush to do the final streaking uh, I have some tissue as well to use so let's give it a try you don't have to go in through all the little dots again just put some paint in the larger areas where you want to have the rust streaks come from make sure you put enough in there 
and again this is just a lot of trial and error Okay. Let's clean the brush up a bit. And let's see if we can do some streaking. Now put a little bit of thinner in your flat brush. Dab it off a bit, you don't want to have it too wet. And just gently move down the thinner will activate the paint, kind of wipe it off if you use too much. So this is why it's going to be a lot of trial and error because you might just lose all your paint completely instead of getting nice streaks don't expect this to go perfect in the first time See over white it's a lot more visible. And then just go in again with your other brush to add some more. Maybe don't let it dry for too long, just kind of try and see what works for you. And keep playing with it till you're happy. Some places it works better than others. As you can see, you can just use the thinner to wipe it all off if you're not happy.
Okay, so just keep playing around with it. I'll fast forward a bit because it might be boring to just look at me doing this for half an hour. And once again, if you're happy with your result, put your clear coat over and you're finished. There you have it. Our two finished icons next to each other. Some scratching and weathering done. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future.